tonight. From Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. It's week 14 of the NFL on EA Sports. The San Francisco 49ers taking on the Los Angeles Rams. We are about 40 miles or so south of Candlestick Point at a place that first opened back in 2014. As you get a look at Levi's Stadium here in Santa Clara, California. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Los Angeles Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at these 49ers as they interplay here. They come in on a pretty good roll here, winners of three straight. Meanwhile, for the visiting Rams, they're in a real groove of late. Winner. Here's the first carry of the game for Cam Akers. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Four yards the pick up, first down. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 25 carries, 86 yards. He's been a huge part of their winning streak because he establishes not just an identity and a tone, but the team relies on it. He takes care of the football, he gains yardage for him, chews up clock, and that's been a big part of why they're winning games lately. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 34-yard line. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 19. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now a run with Akers. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. They'll run here with Akers. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. Oh boy, that is a seven-yard loss, second down now. It's probably a pretty good sign here on the opening drive if your guys from the secondary are coming up and spilling things in the backfield. How about the adrenaline and aggressiveness that led his eyes to the backfield to run up there and make that tackle, setting a tone early for his defense. It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Go, go, go. 
And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. Nick Bosa, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. Now after the sack, here's third and goal from the 20. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Makes the score Rams three, 49ers nothing. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. The 49er offense, they're coming back out onto the field, and we're going to give you a look at the playoff picture now into the weekend in the NFC. And I tell you, four weeks still to go, and everything is wide open, and it's fun. And I know we always talk about, well, if the playoffs were to begin today, and then we kind of go, okay, but they're not. Let's see how it plays out. Wouldn't it be fun to play with this playoff lineup right now? Because to me, just about anyone can win this whole thing out of this grouping we currently have. And by the time we get there, it may look entirely different. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. It's a nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. To throw is gone. A try it for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. Picked off at the 30. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. By the Rams. They'll take over. Well, when you start thinking of guys that are in the mix for Defensive Player of the Year, I think you use him as Exhibit A. Maybe he's not the leading guy right now, but he's at least on the periphery and deserves to be in the discussion. And because of that, he's looking at a game today where in order to make that big move and maybe become the guy, he needs multiple takeaways, multiple big plays, things that get our attention and reverberate for weeks to come. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Little short pass to James. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Brings up second and two at the 20-yard line. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. That's into the hands of Akers complete. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Brandon, how about that reaction there from a defensive end? Able to recognize the screen pass trying to happen. Broke off his pass rush, and then got back to tackle the running back. That's a very athletic and intelligent play. Reminds me of you working out and seeing that the treadmill's open and getting there before anyone else. See, I know you're just patronizing me right now. Everybody knows at home that that is nothing but a shot at me, and I'll take it, absorb it, and we'll move on. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. And that big game may just change the thought process here on fourth down. I think in the red zone, they might now consider going for it on fourth down. Decision made for Sean McVay. They're going to go for it. They'll run. 
run for it with Akers. And trying to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short, and he is short. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in, and if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high because mentally you're saying, hey, hey, you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Goff now looking to throw. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. The first down carry here for Johnson. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 29-yard line. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. A shotgun snap for Gaw. Looking for Ayuk, and he's got him. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. the gun. Here's gone. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. In last week's game for Kittle, there are the numbers. Seven catches, 75 yards. And he's able to haul that pass in there, but he knows he's got a tough task ahead of him. This unit in the top five in the NFL against the pass. He's going to have to really work hard to get open. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. First and 10 at the 40. Johnson. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. Now we've got whistles and a timeout here. Yeah, it looks like we've got a 49er that's down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Here's gone. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tucker rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward, incomplete pass. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Cody Parkey on for the field goal. A 57-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. And he likes touchdowns, not field goals. Now your field goal kicker, you've got to make sure you nurse him through and say, OK, don't worry about it. When we need you, you've got to be ready to go. And the team, of course, loves to see points on the board. So let's see if it changes a little bit if they're in the same spot again. Yeah, we'll see what the decision is here if they get to that spot. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. 
Now he dumps this off over the middle. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll try and run for this with Akers. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Taken down at the 41. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. First down, they'll stay with Akers on the ground. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now back to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Nothing after one on EA Sports. Rams three, 49ers nothing. The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and 15. They'll set up a throw. Going to Woods, but that pass is intercepted. Picked up by Christian Fulton. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Well, you can just see this one coming, couldn't you? It's an obvious passing situation, third and long. The defense is going to bring in two more defensive backs and say, you want to throw? Go ahead. We dare you. And it's just no one open anywhere as they come away with the interception. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Seven yards there at a first down. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. On the ground, this is Johnson. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. He was tackled. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. Out of the gun. Golf. That's to his running back, Carrion Johnson. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Here's Golf. Samuel bringing in the slant. And he gets this inside the 35 yard line. 13 yards there at a Niner first. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. Now gone. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. That catch good for only a couple. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Second and eight at the Rams' 31-yard line. Again, golf. Got the connection here to board. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 13-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue.
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Johnson. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Six-yard pickup brings up second and four. They'll run it with Johnson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating it. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. This will be caught at about the six. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. Three, three. So he gets a shot at atoning for the earlier miss here in the first half and able to knock it through. And what a relief for him, don't you think? Because how many games have we done where kickers missed one early and never got a chance to atone for it the rest of the game? That's a lot to carry around. L.A. set to take over again on offense. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one, and that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They'll begin on the ground with Akers. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Snap will come from the 31 on second and seven. Three-yard pickup brings up second and seven. They're going to look to throw. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That catch, number 750 of his NFL career, and it puts him even with not just one, but two Hall of Famers, Michael Irvin and Charlie Joyner. So some pretty good company at 7-5-0. Oh. Now you're talking about the playmaker, Michael Irvin, and the guy who just made plays, Charlie Joyner. And that's what we're seeing here. Similar style in terms of being dependable, being open, and turning it into plays that you remember. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's James. But they get six. That'll leave him with third and four. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Rams first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. throw now on first down and the open receiver it's Robert Woods and he gets this inside the 35 yard line that's a gain of 13 first down Rams Los Angeles back to throw again he's got his tight end on the corner route it's complete 
And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. He'll look to throw. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Robert Woods, his second touchdown on the season. And the Rams have taken the lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. The Extra point attempt here still to come. And it is up. His kick is good. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. 49ers 3. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This taken in about four yards deep. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us. But sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Now Johnson. And he powers his way up past the 30. Johnson, the ball carrier. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. A gain of five. Brings up third. Golf now looks to throw. Open man is IU complete. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. On first down. It's Johnson, and he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. It's a gain of five, brings up second and five. Now Goff, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Third and five. 
Here's Gong. And Kittle catching the slam. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Our score, 10 to three with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. The Rams take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see he's looked pretty good to this point. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. They'll run here with Akers. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk Hecker over what to do next. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. I absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air, and that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. They've got to find a way to get him more involved in this game plan. Down here in the second quarter, he doesn't even have a catch. And don't think they're not hearing about it in the huddle and on the sidelines. And we often think of wide receivers at times being disruptive. It's just that they know their talents and they know the type of plays they can make and they can make big ones. They want the ball to help their team. Now you got to think he's going to want the ball more. One target, no catches. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. Take over. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Playing well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm, throw the football, feel good about things. Keep and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Cooper Cup, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Rams add on to their lead. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. A nice tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. At their own 23-yard line. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time, we give you a look at what's going on there. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But 
is also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. It leads to second and 10. Back to the air. Goff on second down. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. A gain of five brings up second and five at the Rams' 35-yard line. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte, where it was definitely a game with some intrigue, as you can see by the scoreline. Teddy Bridgewater, strong in the victory, as his guys managed to cobble together their third win in an otherwise dismal campaign. From there, we head up to Foxborough to check on the Patriots at home at Gillette Stadium. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Pittsburgh Steelers. Michael Gallup, a touchdown catch in the victory. And then lastly, on Monday Night Football, those fans will be riled up as it'll be a good matchup between their guys and the New York Giants. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team, of Brandon God and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. No gain there on the completion. Second and 10. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. The pass. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A gain of four. And this is third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Over the middle, complete. It's James. The pass. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. A gain of six there on first. Brings up second and four. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. And the Rams. From the shotgun, here's a give to Akers. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. 
He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Second and 11. And the Niners get there and bring him down. The quarterback is sacked. Oh, Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And, Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. At the 32-yard line. Now a 10th carry for Johnson. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. 13 yards there and a Niner first. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll run it here on the jet sweep. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Now it's second and nine. Running from the gun, Johnson. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. It'll be a gain of seven, and they get it back to a third and three. That's a gain of seven. Brings up third and three. Again, it's Johnson. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. He lost two, and it brings up four. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Here comes the 49ers punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll run this with Akers. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. A gain of a yard. 
brings up second. Going right back to Akers. And that won't buy him much room. Just a one-yard gain to the five. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. A gain of 14. First down, Los Angeles. So the previous play, a big help, as now they'll have it first and 10 up at the 20. Back to throw. They got a man over the middle. It's Woods. The pass. Completed. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. It's second and inches. At the Here's Akers. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On the ground, it's Akers. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and They'll run out of the gun with Akers. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. His carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. Well, partner, I haven't seen a vote for most popular player on the team. This guy's got to get a lot of votes. He does not care, does he? Totally unselfish, physical runner, doesn't worry about yardage, just keeps moving the chains, being a team player. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. Brings up second and a yard at the 49ers' 42-yard line. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It's a gain of three. And a now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Over the middle to Smith. The pass. Seven yards to pick up there. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the 33-yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now a run with Akers. And he's going to have this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Niners 25. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. First down, he'll drop to throw it. That is caught right at the 10 yard line. And they'll get this down to the 10. It's a really nice 15 yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. That's complete right around the eight. 
And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Nice gain of eight that time, but it's second and goal. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Cam Akers, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Rams add on to their lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. The try here for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. That drive a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it was Cam Akers who capped it off with a touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded just outside the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. At their own 26-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second. A shotgun snap for Goff. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. That's a gain of three. It's third and... They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And boy, from up here, I don't think Johnson got there. No, he did not. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling... It. I said go for it. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line. Second and a yard. Back now here in Santa Clara. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And not much, maybe a yard up to the 29. The Rams on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. He's brought that. I know we're the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space. But there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle. And, you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On the handoff, it's Akers. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Seven brings up second. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's James. 
complete. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 42-yard line. On the give, this is Akers. Not much there, maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. The last run good for two, here's second and eight. A gain of two brings up second and eight. They'll go again here with Akers. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. It's a gain of a yard. And this is third. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Now this offense about ready to take over again. Remember, they have won three straight, but getting to four straight does not appear to be in the cards as they are in a big fourth quarter hole. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Out of the gun, Goff. And yet again, Goff is intercepted. Picked off by the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. So that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, well, here we are in December, giving. right? It is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. They'll run on first down with Akers. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it. Because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think he may want to keep them cranking high right here. Oh, we're we'll always talking about the athleticism we see from these guys on the field. How about the intelligence as well? He recognized that there was a screen pass on that one, broke off his pass rush, and got back to tackle the running back. That's great scouting and great reaction. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This from 36 yards out. And his kick is good. And that will extend the lead out to 24. Rams 27, 49ers 3. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And last time was it pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Looking for Ayuk, and he's got it. Give him nine there on the first down completion. A gain of nine brings up second and one at the 31-yard line. To throw again on second down. Golf. That's complete to his receiver, Ayuk. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. At the 39-yard line. From the gun, here's Golf. 
And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack.